I'd like you all to welcome G. Edward Griffin. He is the author of The Coveted Creature from Jekyll Island, one of the greatest financial books of all time. You can look at the banking crisis, as you say, and say that is a crisis in banking. But that's not how I cut the log. I see the crisis is our crisis, the economy crisis, and the banks are going to do very well indeed. The banks are not in crisis, even though they like to have us say the banking crisis and what are we going to do to protect the banks and how do we keep them from failing and all that sort of thing. I think it's kind of a naive view to think that the banks are in trouble because once you understand how how uh, deep and wide their control is over almost every important aspect of our uh, society and our culture even, certainly our economy, our political system, all of that, these, these uh, as our friends call them, the banksters are right in the middle of all of that. And uh, we, you get to be old like I am and you get a little bit skeptical about these phrases like banking crisis and the health crisis and so forth. And uh, you realize that uh, there's a lot going on behind the scenes that we don't know about. Why did the banks allow these crises to happen? Is because it's profitable to them. It's a means of, um, of acquiring uh, uh, the assets of the nation gradually and slowly through a process of inflation. That's the simple version. There are other little uh, side uh, eddy currents that are also at play, but the major one is inflation of the of the uh, economy, the, the, the loss of purchasing power of the dollar. I mean, every time the dollar loses one unit of purchasing power, whatever that unit is, somebody gains it. Nobody asks, well, it went to somebody. Who did it go to? And if you want to follow the loss of the purchasing power that the consumer suffered through. The gain came to the, the cartel members, which is a, is a partnership between government and banks. So the gain came to the government and to the Federal, Federal Reserve System, which is the cartel of the banks. So that's it. So now, why would they be doing uh, crashing the banking system? Now, we can see that's actually happening. So now we come to the question, when is it going to collapse? Well, it's collapsing right now, if it hasn't already, and the banks are leading it. They want it to collapse. Now, isn't that an interesting, funny thing for me to say? Why yes. would the banks want their banking system to collapse? And the answer is very simple, because they have something better in mind, at least better for them. And that won't involve the old traditional use of money at all. Money will disappear as we have known it. They have this thing called the central bank digital currencies, which is, a, is something they will control. It won't be your money or mine, it's their money. We'll be allowed to use it if we obey their dictates and they'll have complete control over us. This is why they are crashing the banking system now, because they want the dollar to collapse so that people will be desperate and they'll be looking to the same people that caused the problem to create a solution to the problem. And people will be so desperate they'll accept anything, including this this horrible thing called uh, central bank digital currencies. Now that, it took a long time to answer your question, but it's because they have, they have an idea of something better for them and worse for us. What is the Great Reset? Well, that's not just monetary, it's social and cultural as well. Yes. And um, it, it includes even the dehumanization of us. It, 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 you know, it, it includes a lot of things other than money, but money is at the core of it because it takes a lot of money to do these things and uh, these people don't have that money. They create it out of nothing. That's the game. That's always been the game. So now you ask me how come all that money was spent and they didn't, they didn't find a cure for cancer is because they went out of their way not to find a cure for cancer. And I can attest to that because I found out that when this substance called laetrile, which everybody thought was quackery because it was found in nature, you can't find anything in apricot seeds that would cure cancer, could you? Why, wait, the best scientists in the world can't cure cancer. Well, you, what makes you think you can pick an, an apricot and cure cancer? And there's that kind of an argument. Well, it can't, actually, the apricot seeds do have quite interesting chemistry in them that there's uh, antip antipathy of cancer. Anyway, so that's how it goes. The answer is that the modern medical um, business model is to control a disease and keep it alive, but never cure it and treat it with very expensive drugs and hopefully right. to get the government to pay for it so that um, you don't have to worry about what price you charge or just whatever you tell them it costs, that's what it costs. Everybody has to have it like a vaccine. Everybody is forced to take it. What a business model that is. So 
That was quite an awakening for me, and it's one of those red pills I'm talking about. Right. More people right. have to take that red pill.